My wife and I are really glad to be members of this church for a number of reasons. Uh, the music is high on the list. The hospitality, the service that this church does, and we like liturgy. So uh, we are glad to follow the church here. I sat with Adam recently and I said, I really like the way you put the whole worship together and you follow the, the church year, and so we have this movement that is part of the ancient history of the larger church, and I'm going to preach this Sunday, and I'm going to completely ignore all of that. <laughs> so, the name of our church is First Baptist Waynesboro. I've heard it suggested that since we Baptists are all Christians and Baptists have such a bad reputation in so many quarters right now, why not just drop the Baptist part? The answer lies in this. There are no generic churches any more than there are generic restaurants. Dropping the name Baptist would no more change who we are than dropping Mexican from El Puerto Mexican Grill would make it a sushi bar. <laughs> every congregation, every congregation follows some tradition, even the non-denominational churches. Baptist is our tradition. It's prime feature is freedom. Now, it's not that kind of modern individualistic freedom that says, this is a free country, I can do what I want to. This is more like the freedom that our friends from up at Fishburne Military Academy, glad you guys are here, uh, it's the kind of freedom they need to be able to do what their superiors ask them to do. Our superior is Christ. Our freedom is freedom to serve Christ. Paul in Galatians asserts Christ has granted us direct access to God free of any go-between whatsoever. Baptist congregations like ours champion every human being's freedom to follow Christ or not without interference. For freedom to follow also means freedom not to follow. This freedom shapes everything we do as a church. Now, if you're thinking your experience with Baptists has not been that kind of experience, I'll get to that later. Freedom shapes Baptist understanding of what it means to be an individual Christian. For Baptists, a Christian is one who has freely voluntarily entered a loving relationship with God through Christ. It's a little like marriage. When Christian couples are married under the traditional vows, the minister asks, have you come here freely and without reservation? to give yourselves to each other in marriage? If the answer is no, the marriage is off. Just so, with the relationship between individuals and God, between you and God, between me and God. And by the way, that is why Baptists don't baptize infants. 
as a wedding is a public witness that one is freely committing that witness to another without interference. Baptist baptism is the public witness that the believer has freely committed to Christ of their own accord and not because of any other influence, including parents, peer pressure, government favor, or church authority. Baptists would no more assume responsibility for that decision for a child than we would to arrange a child's marriage. I'm not saying that if you aren't Baptist, you aren't baptized. I am saying that that's what baptism means in this tradition. Baptist congregations are formed of such voluntarily baptized members. We are what is called a believer's church, a church of gathered believers, baptized, who freely commit to come together as a congregation to form a local family of God, while simultaneously agreeing to protect each member's free and direct personal relationship with God. Children belong to Baptist congregations, but in the same way that they belong to nuclear families. Children depend physically, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically for their well-being on others until they are able to choose full responsibility in the family for themselves. Within congregations of believers, Baptist members honor the equal spiritual authority of every other member. As Paul writes in Galatians 3.27, As many of you as have been baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves in Christ. To claim spiritual authority over another Christian is to try to claim authority over Christ. They are made in the image of God. They have been clothed in Christ. Jill was eight years old when she was baptized in our little church in South Georgia. Just before the personnel committee announced committee assignments. Now it was such a small little church that every member was on a committee. After the committee memberships were called out in our business meeting, Jill raised her hand. She said, I didn't hear my name on a committee. The gray-haired chairman of the committee said, Well, Jill, honey, we thought you were too young to take up a committee responsibility this year. That's my natural accent, by the way, if you're just curious. (laughs) And Jill replied immediately, I'm baptized, aren't I? She got the assignment. It was and is the Baptist way. In the Baptist tradition, Christ is the head of the church and Christ does not delegate his spiritual authority to any other person or institution in lieu of delegating his authority anywhere over any member. It is a direct relationship. I have a, a, it's rather complex theological 
way of explaining this, so stay with me. But as my Baptist mama used to say, Lloyd, I don't care what anybody else says or does. You listen to Jesus and what Jesus wants you to do. That's the Baptist way. And you don't need to get between Jesus and somebody else if you're Baptist. Within our local congregation, we Baptists are like brothers and sisters of equal standing in the family who have to also follow our conscience as the Spirit leads us while at the same time being a good member of the family and keeping the family together in love. A little country Baptist church in Kentucky I was a member of went so far as to put these words in their 1810 founding document. Quote, No member shall call any other member by any appellation, title, other than brother or sister. Y'all know I got a PhD, right? Wasn't that in the, wasn't that in the paper? Uh, I'm also an ordained Baptist minister. I happen to be the pastor there 175 years after those words were written. And everybody in that church called me Brother Lloyd. That's Baptist. Like other leaders in Baptist congregations, I had my authority in that little church by my equal brothers and sisters granting it to me under God's leadership. Among Baptists, there's no bishop to override the congregation's choice. The pastor and other officers of this church have authority only in as much as the congregation grants it to them. It's like my friend who went home to Texas for his father's funeral. Afterward, as the oldest child, his several younger siblings began to show an inclination to give him the main responsibility for taking care of the business that needed taking care of after a funeral. As this conversation was going on, one of my friend's brothers got up and went to the closet in the father's deceased father's house and brought out a nice pair of their father's dress shoes because he thought they might fit, my friend. They did fit. My friend says, it suddenly struck me. They're asking me to stand in daddy's shoes. That's how Baptist authority works. You don't take it. It ain't granted you from on high. It works from the bottom up by the work of the Holy Spirit. In a, in a Baptist congregation, authority works when we put on Christ and the brothers and sisters ask each other from time to time and for various purposes to stand in daddy's shoes for a while. It's worth noting they can also take daddy's shoes off if they need to. And Lord knows, Baptists don't always have to agree with their brothers or sisters, much less their pastors and church officers, in order to keep the family together. Your voice needs to be heard if you are speaking as God has led you, even though you might be wrong. Baptist congregations then have this aversion to hierarchical authority outside the local congregation. They fear it would restrict the family's freedom 
to follow God's particular calling for them in their time and place. As a result, Baptist congregations don't look beyond the local church to get permission from outsiders for what they feel led to do. Baptist churches are not franchises of some larger corporation, as are the congregations of most other denominations. We, First Baptist, are locally owned and operated. Yes, we cooperate with the others around us, but it is cooperation. Now, I'm about to curse to see if you're awake. <laughs> Friends of mine were upset that their denomination had ordained in New Hampshire a bishop of a certain lifestyle with which they disagreed. And they were upset that their Atlanta bishop had told them that they would have to hire a rector who agreed with that ordination. Before I began to talk to them about the fact that I was really on the side of the bishops, I responded to these neighbors, who, by the way, had criticized Baptists so often and assumed whatever Baptists did, I agreed with. So I said to them, well, before we talk about the issue, let me say that in the first place, if you were a Baptist, you wouldn't have to give a damn what they do in New Hampshire. <laughs> or in Stewart's Draft. Or in Charlottesville. As the original Baptist pastor John Smith wrote in 1609, Endowed with the power of Christ, the last appeal is to the body of the church. That's us. We are both responsible and free to make the last appeal in terms of this congregation. And it all flows back to that direct statement about Christ that my mama made. We at this Baptist church are free and responsible to the church in our time and our place. As God calls us to be here and now, Waynesboro, this day, We alone will choose, as led by God, our next pastor. We alone decide our worship style, our theology, our mission partners, our budgets, who we will accept for membership, and who we will ordain under God. And we may not always be right about those things, but we think we are safer than putting them in the hands of some other human person or institution. So, under God, we must not allow any other institution, whether it be state, separation of church and state, or whether it be church, no institution of bishop, presbytery, or financial to restrict our freedom to do what we are called to do as best we understand it under God. By the way, <clears throat> we can't bow to the majority of other Baptists either. Since we agree with Atticus Finch's line, and to kill a mockingbird. The one thing that doesn't abide by majority rule 
is a person's conscience. And we Baptists are all about freedom of conscience. Now, I know that your experience of Baptist may not always have been in line with the Baptist tradition that I've just outlined. The name Baptist, like the name Christian, in our day has often come to take on some embarrassing connotations of restrictions of freedoms, not protections of them. That's why when I was introduced as a Baptist minister to a tennis partner a few weeks ago, I said, yes, I'm Baptist, but not that kind of Baptist. <laughs> I usually add, and this is one that I was going to drop out, but I'm going to leave it in. I usually add, if you want to know what kind of Baptist I am, I'm a recovering Southern Baptist. I am, however, I am, however, proud to say, quick to say, I am a First Baptist Church of Waynesboro kind of Baptist because I know what Baptist means in the name of this little company of the faithful. And if you agree with me that for this kind of freedom, Christ has set you free. Then I invite you when the opportunity comes available for you to join this little family of faith and live free. <laughs>